the revival of an ancient craft is resulting in the restoration of Australia's earliest forms of farm fences. The old adage, you have to be cruel to be kind, is true when it comes to traditional hedgerows. Fiona Breen visited some historic farms in Tasmania and Victoria to see how tough love is giving some new life to some remarkable examples of living fences. This could be a scene from the 1830s. Sheep feeding in a patchwork of green paddocks divided by traditional hedgerows. The only telltale sign that this is the 21st century is a centre pivot irrigator sitting in the distance. Hedges were planted by the assigned convicts, were assigned by the colonial government at the time to each property. Uh, and the convicts were responsible for getting the ground uh, into a farming state and part of that was to plant hedges uh, so we could plant, the family could plant crops and uh, grow crops for the early colony. As early European farmers in the 1830s, the Jumerics developed the 1600 hectare Mount Ira estate in Tasmania's northern Midlands. They planted prickly hawthorn hedges across the property. Remarkably, sixth generation farmer Piers Jumerick still has the property's original plans, drawn up by his ancestor, Tasmania's first surveyor, Edward Jumerick. You can still see these hedges today, so they're still along these fence lines um, and the roads are still where they planned for the roads to be and most of these paddock boundaries still exist even today. And this one here for example, it still survives? This one here is the ram paddock and we st it's still known as the ram paddock and it still has exactly these uh, boundaries as it is drawn on this map. Like most early European farmers in Tasmania, the Jumerics were responding to a call from Lieutenant Governor George Arthur to make the Van Diemen's Land colony self-sustaining. They were granted the use of 20 convicts and it was those transported from the UK that brought the hedge laying skills with them. About 30 kilometres of hedgerow fencing was planted nearly 200 years ago. Now the family is spending time and money restoring the hedges that remain. The hedges haven't been really looked after for the last 60 or 70 years, uh, but basically since wire came widespread on the property. Uh, and so we're slowly now just starting to trim them again, lay them over in the traditional way and bring them back into their traditional working order. This 21st century farmer admits the 19th century form of agricultural fencing that remains on the property is still effective. There's a lot of benefits. I'm not sure I'd be doing it today because of the cost of establishing them, but uh, they, they do make magnificent fences when they are in good working condition. Uh, well, they don't fall down, which is nice. <laughs> so they're very low maintenance, apart from the odd bit of trimming and bit of chainsaw work to keep them stock proof, but that's about it. They generally just look after themselves. The Jumerics have contracted one of Australia's few traditionally trained hedge layers, James Boxall, to help restore hedgerows along the property's driveway. He trained in the ancient craft overseas and is now accredited with the UK's Professional Hedge Laying Society. It's a big undertaking. It's a, it's a long-term thing, you know, it's almost a... Uh, five to ten year plan that, that the, the Jumerics um, are looking at um, and, and it's, a, a, it's a fairly big financial undertaking as well um, but it's, it, it's, it's providing uh, not only an ongoing uh, you know, continuation of the landscape so renewing these hedges so that they don't die out um, but it's also providing uh, shelter for the, for the livestock 
um, you know, somewhere for the birds to nest, which, which you know, most modern farms sort of think now think is important. For masters of the craft, like James Boxall, 21st century hench laying involves a mix of traditional and modern skills and tools. The ancient cutting tool, the bill hook, is as important as a modern day chainsaw. The combination allows the hedge layers to get through a restoration quicker than their forebears. Hawthorns, it's a, it's a good uh, plant to cut and lay. It responds very well to, to, the, to the axe. I always say, um, the, all the old hedges used to say, you know, Hawthorn loves being cut, loves the axe. You know, it responds very well. We get a lot of vigorous new growth. Um, after, after they've been worked. Less than a handful of skilled hedge layers work around Australia. But James Boxall is hoping to change that. He's teaching the ancient craft to a team of young trainees working for the not-for-profit land care group Greening Australia. Cut as much away there as you can. That's it. Key guard. He going, yep, no, that's good. He's down there now. Well done. Typically, the hedge layer will cut the base of the branches savagely to a point where there's just enough wood fibres for the sap to continue to flow through. The long branches are laid flat. Those fibres are still connected to the plant base. Out of everything that we do here, that's the most important cut. Nice down, low to the ground. Once a section is laid flat, one branch on top of the other like dominoes, stakes are driven into the hedge line at even spacing. Yep, that's got him. Good one. Yep, they're all pretty good. So everyone remembers there. So that's our measurement there. That's the cubit, the old biblical measurement. Binders, which can be anything from dogwood to willow, are woven around the top of the stakes to secure the branches in place. People often say, you know, oh, these old hawthorn hedges, you know, oh, they won't hold cattle in, or yeah, you trim them and they still still can't make them stockproof. This was how they were made stockproof. They'd be cut and laid every 20, 30, 40 years and trimmed, and then in 30, 40 years' time, the the next farm manager would start looking at the hedge and go, oh, it's looking a bit thin or gappy there, and oh, I think you know the sheep might start pushing through there, so they would then uh, get the next hedge layer in and make it a nice stockproof hedge again. Slowly, these harshly cut branches will come back to health. Historian Peter Mercer has studied the growth of hedgerows across Tasmania since early white settlement. He sees the island state's plantings as an important part of Australia's heritage that should be treasured. Growing hedges, actually, what was the latest agricultural um, innovation in, in England, and, and it was naturally t came to Australia. They tried looking at local things like the prickly mimosa, which grows on some of the hills around here, and um, they found that um, they they weren't suitable. And the the hawthorn tree was the ideal thorn shrub to sort of grow and, and uh, they found it did particularly well in Australia and, and very well in Tasmania. There were tens of thousands of kilometres of hedges around Tasmania in the early days of white settlement. Records indicate there are 3,000 kilometres of hawthorn hedges left. When wire fencing came in and new highways and small five-acre lots, many hedges were pulled out, while others died or went into ruin. All around northern Tasmania, you see rows of these rather wild-looking, overgrown hawthorn hedges. Nobody gives them a second glance, but they're actually really historic. And if you look at the base, the trunk of the tree here, and the roots below the soil, that's the original plant. And it could be up to 200 years old. Well, they're, they're as much a part of our landscape as our old growth forests and things like that. They're very important. You can't legislate to protect them, but, but you can, uh, you know, appeal to the owners of them, you know, to sort of, to sort of look after them.
In the Western Districts of Victoria, Australia's only female hedge layer, Kate Ellis, is encouraging people around the historic Kyneton area to look after their botanic history. The environmental scientist turned traditional hedge layer has taken to the ancient craft with a passion. When I first started, nobody knew what hedge laying was. So I actually gave quite a few talks around the area uh, for different groups. And uh, just everybody knows that I'm the hedge layer uh, in this region now. Uh, and it's, people are really interested in it. And I've done uh, botanical gardens and private hedges. So I think uh, if you ask anyone in Kyoto about hedge laying, most people know what it is. She first came across the craft while working as a scientist in the UK. On returning to Australia, she soon swapped scientific research for the more physical craft of hedge laying. Studying in Scotland, uh, occasionally I, when I did field work, I would come across hedge layers. And uh, the work fascinated me because it looked so brutal. And, uh, it, it stuck in the back of my mind and when I moved back to Australia I came here and here was this horrible looking hedge and uh, it was either rip it out or do something to it so I thought I'll try and do what they were doing overseas which is headla hedge laying uh, so I, I bought a book uh, I went and saw uh, James Boxall in Tasmania for a day and he showed me the basic elements of hedge laying uh, and I just got to it her work on her own boundary hedge attracted the attention of locals. Soon she was working on hawthorn hedges all through the winter. Oh, it's not glamorous at all, but it keeps me very fit. And I like the outdoors and I love the end result. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure how many years I could keep it up for, but um, while I'm still young enough and fit enough, I'm happy to do it each winter. The thrill of preserving these ancient hedges and passing on a dying craft keeps these passionate landscape gardeners working through the coldest winters. Cutting, pushing, bending and chainsawing the thorny and at times nasty plants back into the shape of the traditional fences of Australia's past. It's brutal for the plant and the hedge layer, but the end result is a beautiful, thriving restoration of botanic history. I love it. Uh, it gets me out of the house, takes me to beautiful places, uh, and uh, I create beautiful, aesthetically pleasing structures. In spring, back in Tasmania, the Jumerics property is dotted with new life and new spring colour. The hedges are starting to sprout. 